Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be building what you can see on the screen here, which is known as a Schmidt coupling. Now a few weeks ago a gentleman from Berlin called Vanim Schaeffler got in touch with me and said that he was having trouble making one of these and could I help him out with it? Well, I had a look at it uh, and I thought, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can build one of those. But as soon as I saw the thing, I thought it would make a fantastic tutorial for the channel. And sure enough, it certainly will. So what we're going to be doing here is using a combination of a small amount of espresso. We're going to be using an IK rig and eight target tags in order to make the thing work. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. I'm going to start by bringing in three nulls. I'll name the first one root, the second link, and the third tip. And these will form an IK chain. So what we're going to do is just set their positions first. Root I'm going to set at 50, link at 10, and tip at minus 30. So there's 40 centimetres between each of them. And that should be in the Y, minus 30. Let's just double check and make sure I've done that correctly in the link I have. I have. OK, so these are great. So we can just drop the link into the root and the tip into the link. And that's fantastic. So that's got that set up. But the next thing I'm going to do is actually change in the object tab here the type from or the shape from dot to circle. I'm going to place this along the Z axis and make these 60 in radius. And I'm also going to change the color of them to yellow. So we'll just go into uh, basic tab, select automatic in the, in the display color. And then in the color, I'm just going to change this to a yellow. OK, so we've got three yellow circles. That's fine. The next thing to do is to give the root the IK tag. So let's give this a rigging tag IK. All we need to do is pull the tip into the end field here and then click add goal. And then we've done it. We can basically move this goal around and we can get what we want. Now let's have a look and see where we are. If we get our tip goal here and we start moving this, we can see that we get the behavior that we'd expect to get. And it all works the way we'd expect it to. And that will that will allow us to move the actual three wheels around in a completely natural way. And they'll work the way we want them to. And we can get a hold of our route and we can still move that around and do stuff with that if we wish to as well. So that's all good. It all works OK. Fine. Let's just undo a few times and get this back to where it was. And now we can move on from here. And what we can do next is start to actually bring in our wheels. So we'll bring in a cylinder. In the object tab, we'll set it to plus Z. Its radius is 50 and that's fine. Its height needs to be 10. It needs a single height segment and 60 rotation segments just to make it nice and round if we can do that. 60. There we go. OK, fantastic. So that's our first cylinder brought in. And again, what I'll do in the coordinates is set this to 50. And then we can command drag to copy a couple more cylinders. This one can be set to 10. And this one can be set to minus 30. We then also need to think about the distance that we're going to put between them along the Z axis. And that will be our next port of call. We want 30 centimetres between each wheel, so we'll set cylinder one here to minus 30 along the Z axis and cylinder two to minus 60. And that's our wheels set up, at least in their initial states. All looking very nice. Now, moving on from here, normally if we have an IK chain, we would think, well, we can group cylinder one in here, cylinder two in here cylinder three in here and then when we move our tip goal everything in the garden is going to be lovely because they're going to behave exactly as we expect them to 
And that's all very fine, but the problem is, if I just switch to garage shade lines and isopalms, we can see that the wheels are taking the rotation as well as the position of the circles. Now that is gonna present a problem. We don't want that. No way do we want that. We want the rotation and the position to be independent of each other. So this isn't going to work. So we can pull these out of there. Just leave them down there. And this is where we need to work with Expresso. And that's what we're going to do next. I'll just rename our cylinders one, two, and three. And then we'll bring in a null object, drop it beneath the tip goal and name it Expresso. Give it the Expresso tag and we're ready to start work. The first thing we can do is bring in number one here, our, our cylinder here, and we're interested in the, ro in the rotation. Let's have a look and see what we're interested in. We're interested in rotation B, I think. Let's just go to rotation here. Yeah, rotation B, that's what we're interested in. So if we say, oops, a little bit too large. Let's get that down to 100%, that's better. Right, if we go to our rotation here and we say transform rotation B, all we then need to do is bring in two and three. And at the input stages, we can give them rotation B as well. Just get that done. And we're, all we need to do is plumb this into here and into here. And that's solved that side of things. If we just rotate our first cylinder, we can see that we've got it working fine. So the next thing we can worry about is the positional side of things. And that, of course, is going to be coming from these three. So we're going to take the roots position and pass it to number one, the link to number two, and the tip to number three. So let's just see how we're going to do that. Well, we can, if we wish, create a second uh, Expresso tag, but there's no real need to actually. We can do all of this just in the same tag and it will work okay. First thing to do is bring in an iteration. So we'll get one of those and its iteration end should be two. We then need two linked lists, so we'll bring those in. First one we can command drag to copy. The iteration out here can be plumbed into the index ports of both linked lists. Just make the window a little bit bigger. Okay, great. So let's populate these lists. So the first linked list here, we can populate with root, link, and tip. And the second one with one, two, and three. So that's our objects sorted out within our linked lists. Moving on from here, we can bring in the root and give this an object port and plumb in the link output there. And then all we've got to do at the output stage is give this coordinates and it will be transform position and it will be position X. In fact, it may be global position. Let me just see. I will, I'll use global. If it isn't, then we can change it afterwards. I'm th pretty sure it needs to be global. Global position X and global position Y. Okay, so they're ready to go. Moving on from here then, all we need to do is bring in number one, give it an object port so that we can pass the objects from our link here into there. And then at the input stage, we can give this position X and position Y. And place these up here so that we're nice and tidy. And then all we've got to do is pass these two into here. Right, let's see what happens. If we move our tip goal, hopefully we get the result that we want. Let's just see what happens. And we do. We're getting the position and now we can rotate independently. So that's all working exactly as it needs to. Fabulous.
that's exactly what we want let's just undo a few times just to set things back where they were and we're okay I think it's just going to here and just zero that out fantastic and that completes the espresso that's as much as we need we don't need any more than that just these two little simple expressions in there are doing the job that we need them to so we're halfway there really the only thing we need to do now is start working with null objects because we need a number of different targets we're going to bring in some more circles as well to use as guides uh, we're going to set up a number of different targets and we're going to set the links up and then build the arms and then make the whole thing hang together with target tags but the next step is to bring in those circles we'll bring in the first one and its radius needs to be 40 and we'll change its color to a cyan blue so somewhere there that'll do nicely and we can drop this into our cylinder here switch the display to lines and we can see the circle here we just need to zero it out so in our coordinates we'll just simply make this zero and that's our first circle in place and we can see that it's at the center of our cylinder there copy this by command dragging into two and three and then we can zero these out too And that's fine they're all in place and they're all ready to do their jobs moving on from here we need to bring in another cylinder again we'll arrange this so that it's plus z and it needs to be five in the radius 20 in the height a single height segment and 60 rotations to make it nice and round once again now let's have a look in our right hand view hit h so that we can see everything and we can see our object there at the center of the world let's just go back into isopalms so that we can see things more clearly right the next thing we need to do is actually arrange four of these objects around our circle so we'll come into our tools and we'll say duplicate we want three copies and we want them along a spline so we can use our circle go into our tool here and hit apply and straight away we've got them now if we go back to the right hand view so f3 we can see that they're not really in the right place so what we're going to do is just zoom in a little closer and then switch on our snapping come into here grid work plane snap and now what we can do is place our original cylinder in this cylinder copies and we can move them let's just move them all forward uh, we want to do so we'll look it's going to here probably want to do grid point let's just take grid point snapping and just move these and now we're snapping correctly and that's where they need to be we need f literally five centimeters inside the circle and 15 outside the circle that's what we need to set up okay so they're ready to go and they're actually done the next thing we can do is actually remove these from this cylinder copy and drop them into one so they're set up and ready to go we can just dispose of the cylinder copies null moving on from here each one of these is going to need a null object placed inside it so what we'll do is select our circle here and we'll bring this forward to here that's where that needs to go and then we can bring in four nulls and we'll call them t1 t2 t3 and finally t4 and we can arrange these this time we don't need to duplicate we can just arrange them around our circle so if we come into our tools and we say arrange we can in our options select a long spline drop our circle into there and hit apply and they should all now be in the correct places so let's have a look in our right hand view 
select our objects and let's just see where we are we change these to say diamonds have we arranged or have we not I don't think we did let's just do the arrange again go back to the arrange circle new transform there that's better now they're in the correct places didn't do it right the first time okay great so we can see that they're now in the correct positions so what we'll do we'll leave them as diamonds I think but we'll just make them smaller make them three so that gives us an indication of where they are and we could also put that in the z-axis as well so that we can see them if we just go a little bit closer here we can see exactly what we're getting and we can see them there fantastic so we've got our targets ready now these need to be renamed to I'm going to call them L1 L for link L2 L3 and finally L4 and then we can drop each of our targets into the appropriate link great so they're ready that's the first set of links and targets complete the next things to do is set up the number two cylinder here and do the same thing so we've got to repeat the same process but don't have to do quite as much what we can do here is something slightly different we can bring in a cylinder once again plus Z five this time it wants to be bigger though or at least taller so the height needs to be 40 one height segment 60 rotation segment okay fantastic that's done moving on from here we can add null objects to this cylinder let's just go into our right hand view so that we get a clearer picture of what's going on and we'll take a quick look at this so we can see our object is here so the thing to do is bring in two nulls and we can drop them both into our cylinder and we'll do all the renaming afterwards we'll call this L1 because it will be the first link now our null on this side of the, of the well and null, and, null, and nulls what we'll do first is change these two diamonds again make them three for now I'm just going to leave them as they are in, in camera mode there in the orientation so that I can see them easily now we can move these into position and they need to be here and we need the other one here so they're now correctly positioned what we can next do is start thinking about duplicating this and position it around this circle so once again we'll come into our tools menu and we'll say duplicate we want circle uh, we want circle to this circle here in fact let's rename these so that we can see what we're doing we call this C1 C1 C2 and C3 so in our duplication let's go back to that we want C2 in there and we need to apply let's see what we've got here um, no it's done the circles it's not what I want so C2 is the circle that I want and I want to arrange L1 so select L1 duplicate apply and now we've got it we've got it exactly as we want it let's, let's see where we are if we go into our right hand view and we can see that these are in the correct places so that's fine we they're they're occupying the same planes as the targets that we've got in our first cylinder and that's what we need we need them set up like that so that's going to work perfectly okay so that's our second cylinders links and targets set up and ready to go we just need to place them correctly and rename them we can see we've got everything in here let's just drop this under our copies for a minute so we've got L1 let's make this L2 L3 and where are we 
L2, oh, this should be L3, L3, and this should be L4. So those are done. And now we can think about renaming these targets. Now let's have a look at where they are. Let's just select all of the nulls for a minute and set them in our Z orientation. And let's just take a look at what we've got. So where are we? Let's just select our tool here. Right, so that's there. Let's see how that matches up with what we've got here. Yeah, they, those two are matching up. That's fine. So this is T1. Therefore, this should be T5. We'll call this one T5. This one will be T6. Let's just make sure of where we are here. Yeah, that will be T6 because that will match up with T2, and it does. So that's T6. T6. This will be T7. And this one, T8. So that's the first nulls worked out. Now these ones here, this will be T9. T10, T11, and finally, T12. And that's all of our links and targets set up for our second cylinder. So let's copy them in. Let's close up our first one. And we've got this here. Bring all of these from here and drop them in there and that's ready to go again we can get rid of this now we don't need it anymore fantastic so now it's just a case of rinse and repeat with cylinder number three as i did before i'll bring in a new cylinder orientate it plus z five for the radius this time 30 because of course it's got to match up with the first set of cylinders that we put in c1 in, well, in cylinder one uh, and one height segment and 60 rotation segments and that's ready to go so next thing to do is to duplicate around this spline and that should be called c3 so we'll duplicate around there options c3 we've still got cylinder selected that's important and then hit apply and we've got those in place switch to our right hand view so f3 and we can see that our objects are there drop this in here for a second select everything and once again we will move them into place which is somewhere just a minute it looks as if i've got those a little bit too high yeah their heights are wrong 30 is wrong it should be 20. That's better, and now I can drop that there. That's correct. Well, what was going on there for a minute? Yeah, no problem. We just had 30 instead of 20. Okay, fantastic. So they're in place, they're ready to go. Uh, the next thing to do is to get the null objects for our targets and drop them in. So let's just rename these L1, L2, L3, and L4. So they're all ready to go. They can be dropped into C3. These can be removed. And now we'll bring in, well, we can do four null objects in a range again, why not? Call these T, these will be T13, T14, T15, and finally T16. So they're all ready to go, select them all, and what we need to do first, though, go into our right hand view, we'll get a hold of our circle. So C3, we'll move this to the correct position. Just need to let's have a look. I've got those in C3. That's incorrect. Let's just move them out of there and drop them there. Then I can move C3 and we won't have any problems. It needs to go there. OK, fantastic. Now what we can do, select all of these nulls, make them diamonds make them three centimeters in the radius and orientate them along their z axes and then we'll do the arrange so arrange should be ready to go apply 
Let's have a look, see what we've got. Have we got them in place? Yes, I think we have, or have we? No, we haven't. Why have we not got them in place? Must be something wrong in the arrange. Let's go back here. Don't want them on C1, we want them on C3. Let's hit the arrange again. Let's do this again. New transform. And this time they are in the correct positions. They're ready to go. So we've got those in there and they're aligning. If we switch to our right hand view, we can see that they're aligning perfectly. That's all good. So everything is set up now and we just simply need to copy each one of these into the correct link. So, oops, we don't want all of them, just one of them. That goes into L1. Let's see where we are. Just select our axis tool. Yeah, L1's got that one, that's correct. So L2, L3, and finally L4, and we're okay. That one should go in there. Okay, so that, that's all good and it's all ready to go and we can move on from here and think about what we're going to do next. Well, the next port of call is going to be to build the arms that actually connect these link parts together. So that's the finishing touch. And then we've got to think about making those things work with everything else. I'll change the display back to garage shading lines. Close this up and this up for now and just open our first cylinder. Now T1, that's going to be important to us. What I'm going to do, bring a, a cube, drop it into T1, zero it out. And then we're ready to start work with the object. It needs to be 15 in the X, 15 in the Y, and finally 10 in the Z. And we can see that we've got the start of our arm objects. Moving on from here, we can remove this from here for now. We'll make it editable and we'll start work with it. If we just hit O for object, we can get a bit closer so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, great. So let's just go into a selection tool, just our brush selection here. Visible only, we can switch off and we can switch to polygon mode and then select our front and rear polygons. Hit I for inset and we'll inset. Let's see what we need to do. Five, too much. Something like 2.5, that should be fine. So we've got a 2.5 inset and we're, we're just about ready. The next thing, I'm just gonna switch again back to lines. Hit MB for bridge and connect those two. And now we've split the or we've created an opening through the middle of our queue. So once again, we can switch back to garage shade lines and we're fine. Fantastic, so that's made. The next thing we can do, we'll switch back to our modeling tool and command drag to copy this. And we'll drop this into another of our targets. And let's see where we are. We need to drop it into target five, which is down here. So we'll close this up momentarily, open this up and T5 is here. So we can drag that into T5 and zero it out. And that's perfect. Take it out of there, place it back under here. Open this back up ready. And then we can select both of these objects and in here, connect objects and delete. So now we've got a single cube. The next thing we can do is bridge the gap between these, create the actual arm piece. So we'll switch back to polygon mode. With our brush selection, we do need visible only this time. Select this polygon here, and then holding down the shift, select this one. I for inset once again, two and a half should be okay. Yeah, looks okay to me. MB for bridge, and then connect those two. And we've, we've got our arm piece complete. Moving on from here, we can drop this into a subdivision surface. So holding down the option key, we'll drop it into one of those. And we can see that we've got that looking really quite nice. Now, we can switch to 
edge mode and in our options switch off the isosceline editing as I always do view L for loop selection and select these edges we'll switch once again our display to lines so that we can see this because I want this back cube or bar or back uh, loop of edges I should say I want this one as well this one this one and finally if we can just select it in there that one so I've got my edges selected and we can switch back to garage shading lines and then hold down the full stop or period key and just make things a lot nicer now these edges here we can do a little bit of work with those if we ul again and we just select these here we just I want that one and for a start that one and then all I'm going to do is just scale these because they're not quite right so if we get the scale tool we'll turn off the Z we don't want to do that we'll lock that axis and we can just move these out so that they're about there that's fine and then we can do the same thing down at the bottom so we'll do that down here we just come down into here UL once again select this and hold down shift and select this back into our scale tool and just bring that out to around there okay looking really good now just to finish this arm off what we can also do we can UL once again select this loop around the bottom of there and this route this loop along the top of there period key again and just do this and that's looking good and then finally I think we can probably select let's just see if we select this loop if it makes a difference no it doesn't really make any difference okay we can leave that as it is that's fine that's okay we're okay we don't need to do any more with that so that's our first arm made but the only thing is we need to make sure that this axis is in the correct place so we actually need to select our axis tool and then we can switch to our right hand view so F3 and then we'll take a look at what we're doing and we need to place this axis here so let's just move it up and place it there and that's fine so that's absolutely correct now but we need to do some more work because it's not actually facing in the right direction so we need to let's have a look we need to just rotate this axis through 90 degrees this way and we can also think about whether we need to rotate it around its axis here so we can probably rotate this through 180 degrees as well so we'll just rotate that round to there and that should be correct that should be fine it should work for us so now we've got that facing along its z-axis which of course it needs to do because we're going to be giving this a target tag I'm going to rename this a1 and we also need to duplicate this four times and we need to duplicate that around our circle which we've got there ready and waiting so we'll do that let's do that right now so if we go into our tools duplicate it doesn't want to be around c3 this time it does want to be around c1 and we've got a1 selected so we should be okay hit apply and we've got four arms already in exactly the right places and ready to go fantastic so with our copies here we, we don't we don't need the copies anymore we don't need this null anymore ultimately but we do need to set these up correctly so t1 if we just select our axis tool so t1 is here we know that a1 is here so we need to drop a1 into t1 we're going to call this a2 this a3 and finally a4 drop a2 into t2 a3 into t3 and a4 into t4 and now they're all set up correctly we can see that they're all in the right places fantastic so in order to create the next arms all we, all we need to do really is take a copy of a1 so we'll command drag to copy this up here we can lose that that's ready to go and then we can duplicate 
these around our second circle. So where are we? Let's have a look where C2 is. So C2, we just need to move this into the correct position. It's at the moment in the, in the center of our cylinder. So in our right hand view, let's do that. So if we drag this forward to here, it's now in the correct position and we can duplicate our arms around this circle. Right, so let's see where we are then. So A1, we'll call this A5 because that's what it will become. And we can duplicate A5 around C2. So let's do that. So duplicate, it wants to be around C2 and hit apply. And now they're in place. Let's just make sure they're in the correct places. So A5 should be around and it should be, I think it should be, let's have a look where we are. Yes, yeah, just open these. I think it should be on T9. Let's just select that. Yeah, T9, that's where it should be. So A5 is on T9, absolutely correct. So let's just do some more work. This will need to be A6, A7, and finally A8. And then these can be grouped. So we can close up one for now. And we're working in here. So let's just open these up. And we need to group into T9, 10, 11, and 12. So A5 is going in T9, A6 in T10, 7, T11, and finally A8 into T12. And that's fine. That's everything in place and ready to go. Fabulous. And now if we move, if we get a hold of uh, our cylinder number one here and we rotate this, we can see that everything is starting to work. It's not correct yet because we've got to put the target tags in there, but we can see that it's all moving and they're all attached in the correct ways. OK, then. So moving on from this step, we need to now be working with our target tags and getting those all set up properly. We'll start with, I think, one. So we'll close two up, open one, select all of our arms and give them target tags. Now we need to target the correct objects. So what we're going to be targeting will be various targets. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So if we start with A1, we need to open two here because we A1 needs to target T5. So we'll drop that in there. Now straight away, we've got a bit of an issue. Now don't worry about that. I'm going to sort that out in a minute. So A2, we're going to be targeting T6. And we've got the same thing again. A3, T7. And finally, A4 will be T8. So we can see that they've all turned sideways. They've turned through 90 degrees. I don't quite know why this has happened, but it's one thing that we can easily sort out. All we've got to do in our rotate tool here, if we select that, we can say per object transform. So we'll switch off the snapping and then holding down shift, we'll simply rotate these back into place. And they just need to go through 90 degrees that way and that should be perfectly good. Let's just have a quick check upstairs in our top view. Just zoom in on these and make sure they are they in the right place. They're not quite, are they? So let's just undo that and then just do this again. Make sure that we get these through 90 degrees if we can. Let's have a look, something a little bit odd going on there. That wants to go there. That's it. Yeah, now we've got them. That's fine. So they're all correct now. They're actually facing in the right direction. And now let's just double check this. If we select one here and rotate, let's see what we get now. And we can see now that they're doing what we'd expect them to do. And they're matching up fine. Okay, 
So that's all good. That's working the way I want it to. Moving on from here then, let's have a look at A5, 6, 7 and 8. And we'll give those the target tags. And then in 3 here, we need to target T13, 14, 15 and 16. So let's just sort that out. We'll get the same problem as we did before. So T13, T14, 15 and finally 16. Once again, we'll rotate these round until they're in the correct places. Let's just double check them in our top view. Just move that into position and now they're correct. Okay, that's absolutely fine. And now let's check what we're doing here just to make sure everything is right and we can see that it is and they're all working pretty perfectly. Now we can see here that these are missing. They're just they're quite close to each other but they're missing. And and this is essential. So you can see the way this is designed so that you know the number 40 is important because the centers of our circles or our cylinders I should say the center of well, it is the center of our circles as well but the center of our cylinders that those center points are all 40 centimeters away from each other the length of the arms is 40 and the and the distance between the links again it's 40 from the center to here is 40 okay in all directions so 40 is a key number and plus I didn't make these very wide I you know I kept I kept the actual diameter of the arms at 15 centimeters. I did originally when I made this go 20 and it was too big which caused them to collide and go through each other. So be aware that you you know you must keep this quite thin this wall size. But anyway, that's fantastic and that means that we've actually completed everything and if we now move our tip goal, let's just zoom out a little bit so that we can see everything. If we move our tip goal we should find that things move in exactly the correct way and they do and let's just rotate this again and we can see it all working we just rotate that we can see that everything is doing exactly what it should be doing to finish things off we can bring in a null and we'll rename it schmid coupling fantastic and then we can s literally select everything and drop it into here. And if we select our null and we move it up and down, right, we can see we've got a bit of an issue there and we've got a similar issue if we move along our X axis. Now, if we just bring this back to where it was, uh, let's just make sure that everything is in there. Bring this back to the middle, somewhere around there. The problem lies in here. We used position and I said that it may need to be changed to global position. Well, it does need to be now. So if we select global position X, global position Y, make that a little bigger, position these up here or place these up here, remove these two, get rid of those, and then we can plumb these in into here. Great, so that's all sorted out. We can close the window down and now if we select our Schmidt coupling null and we move things around we can see that everything is perfectly good. Fantastic. And we can place this anywhere in the scene and play around with it and things will work as we assume they should. Fantastic. So it's all looking very, very nice. We'll just give that a quick rotate just to prove that that works. And it does. Fabulous. So everything is working exactly as we think it should. And that about completes this tutorial because that's what I wanted to show you in this one. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've picked up some techniques that you can use within your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. 
And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.